What's up, everybody? Uh, that was just a little taste of what R2Q5 can do in remote control mode. And uh, we're here to create the user manual for this droid um, straight out of the Imperial side. So, yeah, Jedi Arms dealer here again with a reveal and review. And then again, the uh, the manual for the person purchasing this droid on basically the other side of the galaxy. That's going from San Diego, California, all the way over to Rhode Island. Um, so let's get R2 to be quiet here, and we'll start going over his features. Um, the only way to get him to be completely quiet is uh, R2. R2. Reset system. Game mode. Answer this. Alright, so now he's in chill out mode. He's looking around right now, searching for heat with his heat sensors. So he's trying to turn around and look at me or look at the window over there. Um, so here we go again with another improvement on a Hasbro design. Um, here at the outpost, we're always trying to come up with new ways to. Um, why aren't you being quiet? I don't get it. <laughs> We're always trying to come up with new ways to um, improve upon the toys, or the toys that we wished were released, whether it be lightsabers or droids. All right, I guess he's not going to be quiet, so let's shut him off for now. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to copy and paste in the description everything that was done to this droid so you guys can read the months and months long process of painting and testing and custom electronics installed. Um, this is probably, definitely, not probably, the biggest job uh, we've ever taken on before trying to come out with an improved Hasbro version of something. Um, and hence R2Q5. Of course we're hoping he's gonna make an appearance in the new movie Rogue One on the Death Star. That'd be awesome. Um, so we'll see. Can't wait for Christmas on that one. All right, so if you guys have read about this droid already, um, then you know that he was brand new out of the box. We decided to go crazy on him and uh, pack as many features as we could into him uh, electronically with remote control, with lights all in his dome that you know imitate what a real R2Q5 uh, would look like on screen. Um, and so what we did was we completely dismantled R2Q5 from top to bottom till he was literally down to the raw plastic parts. Uh, we photographed every step of the way, tearing them down, and uh, labeled all of every bolt, screw, circuit card, wire uh, as he was being taken apart. So when we put him back together, he would be exactly, uh, you know, like his original... Hasbro R2 with a whole bunch of brand new features packed in. So the way we do this is um, once all the parts are stripped down to just raw plastic, we actually have a sand tumbler and we put each of the individual parts into the sand tumbler and tumble the parts until the plastic surfaces that are extremely smooth and shiny are all roughed up and um, that's the only way we can get the paint to completely adhere to the plastic um, is to rough it up. And so um, after the inside and outside surfaces were completely roughed up with, with the sand tumbler, um, we laid on three coats, nice thick coats of uh, Rust-Oleum Black. And this is an indoor-outdoor paint that is flexible, UV resistant, um, and the most durable paint we could find you know, coming out of uh, you know, a spray system. Uh, for this particular droid. So uh, we let it completely dry for two weeks and then uh, got out our wet sandpaper and the larger surfaces that you see on him, the sides of his legs, inside of his legs, anywhere you see you know large surfaces where there was any um, you know orange peel left in the paint, um, kind of like when they paint a car, they got to get the outside body surfaces really smooth. We wet sanded him down and polished him and then uh, began the long process of getting out our testers paints in silver and uh, copper and um, meticulously painted 
every single detail uh, on R2Q5. Uh, when all that was finished, we went at the dome project. <laughs> and so there's been five holes made in his dome. Um, you can see two here. Uh, for his front sensor array, and then if you turn them around, uh, you've got the elongated rectangular sensor array, um, and then of course the round one. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire him up. I'm sure, he's gonna be noisy. We'll see if we can put him back in game mode and get him to be quiet again. Here we go. Um, and again, all of his Hasbro features are in there. Um, so. He reacts to, of course, you know, R2, which is cool because he's R2 Q5, so it still works out. Um, hey, R2. Reset system. Reset system. Game mode. Answer this. Now let's see if we can get him to be quiet this time. <laughs> um, so again, LEDs are really difficult to see on camera, their actual brightness. But um, what we did was put four blue flickering LEDs into his two front square sensor arrays um, behind like a, a clear patterned windows we put in there, all customized, glued in, and then used um, flowable silicone to make custom lenses so it looks nice and smooth um, on the outside. And you get this really cool kind of uh, blue LED flickering effect with the LEDs inside his dome, uh, so it looks like the LEDs are kind of cycling uh, like a real R2 unit. Um, around the back side, we've got his elongated sensor array, and I'm going to go ahead and pick him up and bring him right up to the camera, and let's see if you can see the pattern of what it's doing. But there's three rows of LEDs in here that cycle to seven different colors slowly. Real difficult to see on camera, but um, basically there's three rows of three millimeter LEDs inside his dome that slowly cycle through the seven colors of the RGB LED spectrum. So this makes for a really cool, kind of almost microscopic, tiny light show in there. Um, each individual LED is doing its own thing, and so it looks like one of his real accurate sensor arrays from the back. Then we've got the round uh, sensor array in the back, or data port, and we've got that with a flashing green LED inside. And once all the LEDs in this rectangular array get going, um, it kind of makes like a general blue color coming through the round flashing. Um, but when you first fire them up, I want to show you, then we'll have to put him back in game mode to get him to be quiet. It imitates the color that this sensor array gives off. So it starts off as red, so it's flashing from green to red. Um, and then as it cycles, um, it'll settle into like flashing from like a green to a blue color once all it can, because it's mirroring what's happening over here, because this really lights up the inside of his dome with whatever color's going on here. So here we go. And you can see it starts out green to red, and then as these LEDs change, you can see now it's going to blue, and then to green, and so on. So, as the LEDs over here cycle through the colors, you can see them mirrored through here, but then there's always the flashing green side of it. R2. Reset system. Reset, reset system. Game mode. Answer this. All right, so let's see if it'll be quiet again. Um, now the last and fifth hole that was made in his dome, no, he's not gonna be quiet. <laughs> All right, we'll shut him off. So the last and final that was made in the top of his dome was uh, this port here. And what we've done is connected a nine volt plug that goes travels down to the middle of his head and comes down into his left side um, storage compartment. And you can see there's a 9 volt energizer in there. And um, the 9 volt energizer powers the camera that pops into the top of his head. All you got to do to mount it is pop this piece out. You got your original Hasbro uh, piece that's painted black. 
and uh, works just as normal. And then here is the miniature camera that goes into the top of his head. And we've modified the post, make it a little wider so it's a nice snug fit. Remember to take the lens cap off, because yes, even this little th camera has a lens cap, uh, otherwise you won't see anything. So we pop the lens cap off, install this into the top of his dome by just pushing it in. Nice snug fit. There you go. So to power the camera, uh, you can't really see it on camera right now. Let's have to do this. Tip it. But there he is with his camera installed. Um, and so if I can get in here closer, <clears throat> as far as the top sensor array goes, uh, you just take this camera. It's got the, uh, the plug, the opposite plug. You plug it in here, and now the 9-volt battery inside his storage compartment is powering uh, the camera. This does have infrared LEDs in it, so it will work really well in low light conditions, a little bit in complete darkness. Um, and so what this camera does is it actually transmits a wireless signal. I don't know if you can see the antenna here. Transmits a wireless signal to a wireless receiver, and the wireless receiver um, then you can connect the wireless receiver to your TV um, and also the included video glasses.